Okay, so we're good. We are on air. Mary Jo, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing terrific. Thank you. So I want to welcome all of our listeners to today's webinar. We're really excited because we have uh, Mary Jo Ehrman, who is, uh, by our definition, uh, a best-selling author. She's authored uh, two really amazing books. Uh, one is titled Farming Without the Bank. The other is titled Wealth Without the Bank or Wall Street. So we want to take a moment just to welcome Mary Jo. Uh, I've known Mary Jo for a number of years now. She is uh, a very successful practitioner of the process of becoming your own banker, the infinite banking concept. And she has just an incredible passion for uh, the farming community and really has developed that as her niche in uh, her financial practice, which is great. And so we're really uh, just incredibly honored to have um, Mary Jo commit some of her time to be with us today. And the specific objective of today's webinar is really just to give you a bit of an overview of what exactly it is that Mary Jo does and how what she does benefits the farming community. And then also to be able to share with you how you can expand your knowledge based on what you hear on today's webinar. And we've also got a special gift for everybody who sticks around till the end of the webinar and we'll show you exactly how to get that. You definitely don't want to miss it. Now, going back to Mary Jo, we've had Mary Jo on uh, 630 Ched, which is the Chorus Radio Network here in the province of Alberta in Canada. And Mary Jo has been a guest on our show titled Talk to the Experts, which we're on several times per year. And we had occasion to interview Mary Jo on that show. And so we wanted to carry that over into a webinar format to give people an opportunity to also hear her message on uh, the social media platform. So with that, uh, I'm going to say hello again, Mary Jo. And if you wouldn't mind maybe just taking a moment and just sharing with uh, the webinar listeners a little bit about you and what led you to writing these uh, two incredible books. Okay, I'd be happy to. I, a little bit about my background. I came from a farm ranch operation in the States, obviously, that's where I'm at. Um, and when I was introduced to the infinite and banking concept, I just knew that it could help our farmers, but I just couldn't find anybody that understood the farming industry that taught the concept. Right. And so, um, and I couldn't get through to the farmers, really. They, they just didn't quite, they didn't think that I knew how farming worked and the, the numbers that go in and out. And so really the book came about just out of pure honoriness on my side to say, hey, you're going to understand this. And so I know that farmers read and they love to read. And so I thought, well, I know you read and I know that you don't like to read a lot and you want straight into the point. And so hence the book. But really the farm part came because I was frustrated. Um, now let's be clear, I personally don't farm. Now my parents do and my brother does, but when I hear farmers talk, I personally was just frustrated with the banking system and how they did it and could not believe that they weren't frustrated. Right. Like, how do you want to get Like, how are you okay with that? <laughs> and so, that this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy, and my favorite people in the world to talk to are farmers. So, no offense, Jason, I still love you, but I love <laughs> to talk to farmers. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> and and it's an industry that that I am very, very passionate about. You know, it's just people that I love. So, why wouldn't you help those that you love? Oh, that's that's awesome, and and we love you too. And we wanted to ask you, you know, what was your inspiration for writing uh, your first book, Farming Without the Bank, and what is one, you know, or more key things that you want people to grasp from reading the book? Um, my inspiration really was, it was to get the message out so that they understood there is a possibility of how to do it. And in the book, what they're going to find is that there is a case study. There's four or five case, I think there's four case studies. Um, and so you can see it working. People's imagination is the hardest thing to get through. And if we can't imagine something, we have to physically see it. I don't imagine well, and I need to see things on paper. So I, ha 
I knew that I had to put it on paper. And once I put it on paper, then great. Absolutely fantastic. We, you know, they saw it, they understood it, um, and so on. So uh, I forgot what, the, what was the second part of your question? So the second part is, you know, if you could share maybe a couple of things that you want the readers to grasp from the book. So oh. when we hear the, the title of the book, Farming Without the Bank, what specifically do you want people to take away or grasp from reading it? People really need to understand a couple of things. One, I don't hate bankers. Nobody hates the banker. The banker is a great guy. He's most likely our neighbor. He's a really good friend. It's somebody that we have built a relationship with over 20, 30 years of farming. Right. I do not have a problem with the banker. And, and you talk about it all the time, Jason. It is our banking system that is broken. So it is not, it is not the bankers themselves. We don't, we can always use the banker as plan B, yeah. but we don't want to use them as plan A. So don't get caught up in the fact that a lot of people that read the book get, think right away, they have this preconceived notion that I'm going to just tear somebody apart. It's not about tearing anybody apart. It's about building up our farmers so that you have what you need to be sustainable. Absolutely. So keep an open mind when you read that book. And, and don't just, it's not an all or nothing approach. That's another thing that people do when they read the book. They close it and say, you know what? Can't do it. Not going to happen in my lifetime. I, it's not worth it. But it has to start somewhere. So if you're not starting it, who's going to start it? You're going to just pass it off to the next generation. Maybe we can't get out of the banking system. It's a process. And I say it all the time. You didn't start farming 5,000 acres overnight. Don't expect to get out of the banking system overnight. That's a really, really powerful, powerful comment that you just made because it's a process that takes time and you know, regardless of um, what occupation a person has, the in order for any transaction to happen, so one of the things that we share with people is that money has to move from one supply source to another in a relatively short time frame, otherwise nothing happens. And when when farmers earn revenue through their, their family farming operation, the first people to get paid are the banks. And so we want to educate uh, farmers and people from all walks of life that A, you don't have to be rich to get into the banking business. B, you're already intimately familiar with the process of banking. And C, until you control it, you're not going to keep the wealth in the family the way that we teach our clients, yourself, myself, all of my colleagues, the way that we teach our clients to do this. And so what I really love about your book is that you're really speaking from the heart and that it really comes across how passionate you are about the farming community and that you really care. And th the case studies that you have outlined in there are, they're not hypotheses. Th these are things that are real uh, examples that you've seen come to life with farming clients. And so we wanted to share with the listeners that both uh, the books that you uh, have authored are educational resources. And that's really the key, I think you would agree, is that we're coming from a place of education first. Because unless somebody understands the problem, the solution doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And another thing that they have to remember, and I get this a lot, especially um, your Canadian listeners, no, the book is not Canadian rich. It is not, the, the rules are a little bit different. That doesn't mean it won't work. Right. So well, a lot of people will say, well, you know, will this work in Canada? Or do these numbers apply to Canada? Um, no, I, I mean, will it work in Canada? Yes. Do the numbers apply to Canada? I don't know. I'm not a Canadian agent. That is where you come in as the expert. And don't let that stop you from reading the book and understanding the concept and the thought process behind it. Because the numbers are the numbers. They're gonna, they might work a little bit differently, but they're gonna work. And so don't, 
don't let that stop you either. Uh, but on that note, that you, you just said something that that crossed my mind, and I just have to laugh because another thing I say, and I'm going to grab something here. All right. Um, another thing I say is that nothing has changed. You know, we didn't start farming overnight, right? I've already addressed that, but we've farmed the same way for the last hundred years. We finance the farm for the same way. So we don't farm like we did 100 years ago. I mean, nobody's got horses and buggies today. Um, but we're still financing it like we did 100 years ago. Yeah. So this is fun. One of my clients sent me this. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So farm credit is a, they're celebrating the 100th year anniversary. We're still using them. We're still financing it like we did. I was like, I said, I'm like, can you guys like send me your shirt? <laughs> I'm just wild that we are still financing like we did 100 years ago. Why would farm credit services still be around if farmers weren't still using them? So guess where the buggies and the horses went? Junk pile. Yeah. And you know what's interesting uh, in addition to that? is a number of the farming uh, clients that we work with and people that are introduced to us, we find that within the farming community, it's a very tight-knit uh, community. And so when we're able to help uh, a farmer get going on this process and help them recapture you know, the interest and the money that they're otherwise transferring away from the farming operation, which just by proxy, they're transferring it permanently away from the family. So. A farming client of mine, his name's Ken Triton, he's uh, just a wonderful guy. His family runs a, a wonderful farming business and has done so for many years. He shared with me a number of weeks ago, he said, Jason, you know, cash flow uh, and expenses, instead of paying the money to, whether it's, you know, a farm credit operation uh, directly from the equipment manufacturer, like when you're buying a tractor, um, a seeder, you know, sprayers, all this stuff, that you need to make your operation run, if you can recapture those dollars, what kind of positive financial advantage would that bring to so many other farming clients? And I said, you know, you're absolutely right. And he said, you've got to put out some more content that speaks to the farming community, which led to you and I having this webinar today. And so when you see this process working for the farmer, is there anything that they can't utilize this process for? No. The no, I mean, you, you, if you're using money for it, you should be using the concept, right? Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. And could you maybe... Unless you're, unless you're bordering. Yeah. <laughs> just for you. But just take the extra in the policy because you didn't have to spend a lot. What, what would, you know, just thinking of another question that kind of came to my mind when you were sharing earlier about farm credit and the history of that, with all of your experience in dealing with the farming community, what do you see uh, those clients utilizing this process for in the earlier stages as they're, you know, capitalizing their system and they're slowly taking control of that banking function? What are some things that you see your farming clients utilize this for? Uh, a lot of people, you know, I've got some people that are using it for down payments on land. And, I, you know, we don't have enough in the policy to buy all the land through the policy. So we're going to utilize it as a down payment. Uh, maybe we're utilizing it to buy seed or chemical or fertilizer. Or, you know, maybe we put a down payment on a tractor. Um, Maybe those younger farmers, maybe we're using it to pay off student loans and it's not even farm related at all. Okay. It, or so called farm related, I guess. And, or it's just paying off some credit card debt. Or it's going, it, it, where is our lack of control that we need to get more control of right now? Maybe it's that credit card bill. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's the farm implement store or the farming store here they're running um you know maybe it's running the tsc something like that where gosh i have a big bill there or the fertilizer or whatever that i need to have control of that and i need to have 
Because the one thing that we can recapture interest, and that's great, but when we can control our payback term, mm -hmm. that's even better. Because in the farming industry, what we find is you have to pay the bank X amount of dollars, or they're not going to give you money next year. Right. Or in order to give you money next year, they're going to make you sell some land that was used as collateral. Well, now you're selling your collateral, so now we're in. You know, now what are we going to do? They want us to sell collateral, so they give us a loan. But what happens when we don't have collateral to borrow again? Right. And I'm like, I still don't quite understand how the bank thinks that that is okay, but whatever. And so, what is you know? Do we need to take control of that loan? So if we, if we need to miss a year, we can miss a year. If we need to make an interest-only payment, we can make an interest-only payment. What is the most important objective at the moment? That is awesome. I'm hearing you talk about control, and that is so important because let, let's agree that when there's an absence of control, and let's say that there are things that are happening on the farm that might be outside of the farmer's control in terms of Mother Nature and all those things that can have an impact on cash flow, just to know that you now have complete control over the repayment schedule uh, when you need financing for things like some of the equipment that you're seeing on the screen right now and these are quite common and quite um, expensive pieces of equipment that farmers need to need to purchase and maintain and so when we can keep the money in the family that really leads them toward a peaceful existence and being able to eliminate the banks from the equation you know, our experience in talking to farmers is that they've always been taught that there's a certain way to go about financing their farming operation, but yet they're disappointed again and again, and there's a much better way. And one of the things that we encourage people to do is first and foremost, to get their hands on a copy of Farming Without the Bank and to take the time to read the book, because very much like Mary Jo, speaking for myself personally, I won't entertain working with anybody who has not taken the time to read whether it's farming without the bank whether it's uh, R. Nelson Nash's book uh, becoming your own banker unlock the infinite banking concept you know these types of books are really geared to give you a foundation of knowledge so that it creates a lot of clarifying questions and then you can meet with someone if you're in the United States you're meeting with Mary Jo She's leading you through a very consultative process. If you're in Canada, you're meeting with myself, with one of our team members here at McGuire Financial. I mean, we hold ourselves out there to be experts at this process. And that's the whole point of moving through from getting educated to understanding the problem. Most importantly, understanding why the solution matters to solve the problem and then taking action so that you create financial peace of mind for your family and for the maybe the future generations that might want to consider taking over the farm. Right. And the book is, I mean, look at like <laughs> it's 99 pages. Yeah. I mean, it's a three hour read. Yeah. And you and I know if you don't read the book first, you're going to sit with us for six hours and you're going to walk away and you're going to be excited about the opportunity but you're still not going to know why right and you need to understand what Nelson is teaching us why are we thinking this way i mean i wrote this book but if you're going to read mine you should follow it up with nelson's becoming your own maker completely between agree. the two of us it's like what 200 pages you know i mean it's <laughs> it's not like we're we're real wordy <laughs> Spend the time to understand if you come in and if again if you meet with if you won't even get past my secretary if you haven't read the book. Yeah. And why why are we so you know don't be scared to read it. Worst case is you learn something. Maybe you don't even like what you learn, but at least you know you don't like it. <laughs> That's right. But we can't change, and I talk about this all the time. We've done this for a hundred years. The teacher says it. We can't change what we're doing if we don't 
change what we do. Absolutely. You just can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over. Completely agree. And I, I put up on the screen uh, your website, Mary Jo, farmingwithoutthebank.com, which I just want to give you kudos. It's a, it's a great website. And for people tuning in to the webinar, uh, we encourage you to visit the website. There's um, Mary Jo does a great job of sort of providing you with uh, some of her blog content, uh, an introductory video, uh, just an abundance of resources that she's put together on this website. So we highly, highly encourage you to go and visit, take a look. She has um, a well-stocked, obviously, uh, arsenal of educational material on the subject. Now, if you're ordering uh, a copy of the book, you can order that. If you're in the United States, by all means, uh, go directly to Mary Jo's website, farmingwithoutthebank.com. If you're listening and you're here in Canada, let me just bring up our website so that you can have a look at that as well. And on our website, we also have a bookstore, which is located under events and resources tab on our main uh, homepage. So you can see there's a bookstore link there. And so we would encourage you to go there, get your hands on a copy of the book. And then the next step in that process is to uh, get to clarity. Make sure you create that time so you can ask some really good questions and get clarity on the process before you decide you know, to do anything at all. Because this is really about addressing what people tell us that they want. They want complete control over the use and liquidity of their money. They're sick and tired of paying interest to banks and to, to credit finance companies and not seeing ever seeing that money again. It's a permanent transfer of money away from the family. Like Mary Jo mentioned, uh, complete control over the repayment terms when you're accessing capital uh, from uh, the insurance company and you're utilizing it for everything else that you would have otherwise paid cash, leased or financed, you're creating a system that increases in value on a daily basis. Uh, that value can never be repossessed or taken away from you. And equally as important, you're also uh, addressing the need to have tax-free money in the form of death benefit that comes walking in when it's needed the most so that it can look after all of those terminal tax obligations that we will all face one day. So there's so much more in terms of benefit, but we really wanted to take the time to address um, two things. One, A, that Mary Jo is an expert at this. I haven't met anybody who uh, can even hold a candle to her level of expertise when it comes to implementing this process with the farming community. And so we wanted to share with you that there's a better way to get this done. We talked about how to get the book, whether it's uh, if you're a US citizen or you're here in Canada, we shared those two websites, farmingwithoutthebank.com and mcguirefinancial.ca. You can see the URL on every one of the slides here. Now, Mary Jo, we're going to offer uh, a special gift to everybody who's hung around on the webinar. But before we do that, I've got a couple more questions for you. Are you still okay for time? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, well here we go. So one of the things that um, I would believe that you know the listeners on the webinar would uh, really like to know is maybe share with us, um, if you can, maybe think through a recent example or one of your favorite examples of how this process has helped a farmer in terms of what they capitalized their system for what they were able to use it for and what the net effect of that in terms of how did it make the farmer feel when they compared it to their life before implementing the process of becoming your own banker and what their life has been like since implementing the process. Okay. Um, I'm going to share two stories if you don't mind. Please do. One, um, one is I have a young, I have a young rancher who started the system, he was working off the he was working off the ranch as well as ranching. So we started a policy for him. He was able to carry over more calves and build his herd. The bank would allow him to do one a year, now he's doing um, twenty a year. And so great, everything was going as planned, you know, life was good, we were giving him an opportunity to get the cattle herd up to five hundred heads. Well, lo and behold, 
his dad has a brain tumor and he goes blind. So now what? Now the, my client has to go back and take over the ranch. Well, financially, he was not in, he wasn't ready to take over the ranch. That was supposed to come like five, 10 years down the road. So that gave him having those loans in the policy and not having those through a banking system, he's able to pay interest only. That's all he's doing at this point is paying interest only because he had to go get a million dollar loan from the bank to take over mom and dad's ranch. And now we've got to clean up some cattle, you know, some older cows and bring in, and just the breeding stock needs to be changed a little bit. So he wouldn't have had that opportunity to do that or even qualify for the loan had he had this additional money borrowed from the bank. They would have said there's no way. Right. Plans change, and he's got the opportunity to say, you know what, we can do that. And even, we talk about this a lot in the farming industry, and it's really about saving the family farm. And nobody is talking about saving the farm. Everybody is just in survival mode, and we need to change our thought process a little bit. Because you work really, really hard to build that farming operation. Why aren't you saving it? And in his instance, he is a diabetic, and he is non-insurable. So we have insured moms. And mom's life is insured and he's the owner of the policy. Okay. And I know you talk about this with your clients. And it's very important for farmers to understand that we need to be insuring mom and dad. And mom and dad should be insuring whoever's on the farm. If it's a, I don't care if it's a hired man or if it's a, a, a son or daughter or, or son-in-law, whatever the situation. We need to have the key man insurance. And so, ironically... I mean, it just so happened that we had to insure mom. So what happens if he doesn't pay back those loans in the policy? Upon, upon mom's death, his loans are taken care of and his ranch is debt free. If he keeps taking the loans through the policy and whatever's left of the death benefit, he can pay the bank off if he needs to do that. And so it's really a, it's, it's so powerful in so many ways. It's not just, oh, I've got the flexibility and the control. We've added another tier for him to really, and the security so he can sleep at night knowing that he's got this debt that upon mom's death is most, is going to be taken care of if she outlives him. You know, um, another story that I have is I have a client that came to me whose husband passed away. And your farm listeners are really going to, they're going to understand. So the, the husband, it was a husband and a wife, and the husband owned the farm 100% clear, no loans on it. Mom and dad died. He gets the farm. The estate says that he has five years to pay off the siblings. Well, I call them vultures. So the siblings who get a little smell of money, they want it all right now. They don't want the five-year plan. So he ends up it's very stressful, legal stuff going on. He ends up losing, he ends up having to refinance the farm to pay them off so they just be quiet. Wow. Shortly after he does that, he dies of a heart attack. Oh, no. So now we have a widow on our hands who is left with $600,000 of death benefit. She just so happens to see my book on Pinterest of all places. She grabs the book, she calls me and says, I think this is what I need to do with his death benefit. So we take $600,000 of death benefit and we start a policy with some of it. What did we do? We created $3.1 million of death benefit on mom should something happen to her. Wow. With $600,000. And guess what? By year seven, in, in the U.S., the way we construct the policies, by year seven, she has all of her $600,000 back. So she didn't lose access to any money throughout the years of paying premiums. And we've created $3.2 million of death benefit for the kids to keep the farm going. That is a fantastic That's story. It. Everybody is working to keep it going. 
let's make sure that we have it for the next generation. And you talked about my website and my blog, and I have one blog in particular called the Generational Wealth Blog, and it's huge to see the power of taking death benefit and rolling it into another policy and keep doing that through the generation. I mean, you're paying 18 cents for every dollar of death benefit, income tax free. Awesome. Do you think that can sustain some family farms and get us out of the banking system? Absolutely. I take it for generation, but somebody's got to start. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for, for sharing those two stories. And again, just powerful testimonies to how incredibly beneficial this process is. And mm -hmm. what you are have also been kind enough to do, which uh, our listeners uh, will certainly appreciate as well, is we're going to provide and committed to giving everyone a special gift. And so that special gift that we're going to provide is going to be the first three chapters free of Farming Without the Bank. So that's just an incredible offer and we really appreciate you being kind enough you know, to offer that to people who are taking the time to go through this webinar and who might want to learn a little more. And it's kind of like, you know, people who want to learn how to swim, right? They're not diving into the deep end of the pool to get going. They're kind of, they really want to feel the temperature of the water first and walk down those first few steps going into the pool. So we're giving them those first three steps and saying, hey, if, if the water temperature is still good and you want to wade in, then we'll get you a copy of, of the book so you can read it in its entirety. So. Mary Jo, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And I just